med Fredrik Reinfeldt tyvärr utgår. Men istället får vi möjlighet att träffa Daniel Kellman. Han introduceras på svenska 2004 med romanen Jag och Kaminski. 2008 belönades han med P.O. Enqvist-priset. Hans senaste bok F, som i den fjärde boken i svensk översättning, kommer det handla om nu. Vi hjälkomnar Daniel Kellman som samtalar med Daniel Sandström från Albert Bonnier förlag. Welcome Daniel and Daniel. De får en stor applåd. Tack så mycket. Välkomna hit. Jag heter Daniel Sandström och är till vardags förläggare och litterär chef på Albert Bonniers förlag. Och bredvid mig här står det en av, av samtidslitteraturens stora Daniel Kelman. En liten applåd för Daniel. And now we will conduct the interview in English. Um, Daniel, uh, we're here to speak about your writing in general, but more specifically so about your latest novel called F. And um, F is a novel about a family. Um, what kind of family is this? Um, it's a family of con men. Um, it's 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 a family of three brothers, and they are all uh, in different ways, uh, not what they seem to be, and they don't know that about each other. So everyone think every th one of the three thinks he's the black sheep of the family, but they all are the black sheep of the family. And uh, one is a priest who doesn't believe in God. Uh, which isn't such a grave thing. It just happened to him. He became a priest because he liked many things about that job. Mostly, mostly also he never managed to, to, to have a girlfriend and he found that it's a very dignified way to not have a girlfriend, to become <laughs> Christian and then to, to be a priest. Also he likes the music, he likes churches. Uh, he, he, he actually likes to help people and somehow he thought that that thing with God that will work out. You can trained to be fa faithful you can if you just immerse yourself in that world it will just happen but then it doesn't happen to him no. and he's kind of trapped in that job so uh, he's a kind of a sweet soul he's not a terrible person but he's he just also very good at the, the cube Rubik's cube yes, yes that's the other thing he's, is his hobby is uh, speed cubing <laughs> it's kind of a rather dated hobby that he's still carrying from his childhood in the 80s uh, and uh, people always annoy him by asking him is this still around do people still do that the cube and going to cubing competitions and they do i mean you can look it up on youtube it's amazing the the there are all these speed cubing competitions still around and and, and the, the world record actually captured on YouTube, somebody manages to solve the cube in about three seconds. It's, it's totally amazing, but it's also not very interesting anymore, although it's amazing. So uh, it's kind of a bit of a pitiful uh, passion he's carrying with him. And uh, the other brother is, uh, the, uh, so he's the older brother and then there are two twins. One of them is a fraudulent investment advisor so he what he's basically doing is he's running a ponzi scheme he uh uses the money new investors are giving him to pay the interest rates to the old investors so obviously this can, he can't go on uh, and and he's knowing that this can't go on he's living in a state of extreme agitation and worry and nervousness and 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 lies have crept into every part of its existence and uh, he's a half mad person anyway also he's self medicating against mm -hmm. very much so uh, very much so that doesn't really help he's buying uh, medication on the internet and taking a lot of it and so he's kind of um, uh, delusional. He's yeah. seeing and hearing things that might be there or not, but other people don't see them. And then there's the third brother, his twin brother, who is an uh, actually a very pro he was a very promising painter, but then he didn't quite find it in him to become a professional painter. Not the lack of talent, more lack of self-importance. I think I like him very much as a character, but he's an art forger now. He's not 
quite forging other people's paintings. The paintings are original. He just ascribes them to a painter who's pretty much his own invention. Who uh, and and so what he's doing is he's forging a painter, not 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 paintings. He's he's actually making the masterworks themselves He's him, himself yes. yes and he is the leading authority on that painter so he is the person uh, in charge of that painter's estate uh, and which means that he is uh, the person who has the legal right to this and, and every great dead painter has a person like that um, he's the person who has the legal right to decide what whether a painting is genuine or not so, yeah. and if the person who is in charge of the estate and has the right to decide about the authenticity is the person forging the paintings, then that is person is systematically unbeatable. I yeah. mean, it's, it's like the right to print money. But he's very careful. So some paintings he does, um, some of his own paintings he deems as inauthentic and some forged paintings by others he deems authentic. He's very intelligent and very careful. He does a good job. So these three brothers, of which two are twins, identical twins, um, they, I mean, the, the, the uh, premise of the novel is that they are left, as it, as it were, by their father. He, he, he leaves them after a traumatic uh, event. Could you describe that event which, which really sets the novel off? It's a hypnotism uh, show, a show of stage hypnotism. Uh, I don't really know why I came up with that. I just got fascinated by stage hypnotism. And uh, I'm always, like many, many people are, I, I really don't like to be called on stage when I go to any kind of show. It's really not very... Uh, I, I really hate that, actually, when I'm Me called too. on stage. Mm. Everyone does, actually. And I thought... Wouldn't it be interesting to start a novel with somebody being called on stage and then actually that triggers a chain of really terrible event that changes a lot of people's lives forever. So the worry, the, the, the fear of being called on stage is actually totally justified in that case. And uh, so yeah, I, I, I imagine this kind of a scene between the father who challenges the hypnotist because he tells him it doesn't work on me and then it does work on him or it looks like it does and it leads to him actually leaving his uh, his family forever it's kind it's 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 a it's a uh, uh, it's it, uh, before i wrote that scene or before i started the novel that way i had written plays yeah uh, and, 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 and the screenplay. So in a way, as I, I realized later, uh, it was a way for me to come back to writing a novel, but on the way there, I, 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 started, a novel, I started a novel with a scene that was set on a stage in yeah. a very dramatic setup. So it was my way back from drama to the novel. In a, in a, in a dramatic sense, uh, in every sense of the word, so to speak. Um, so, F is about this family, the Friedland family. A father leaves and its three sons are all facing a difficult time as adults. Uh, Cornerman, as you say. Um, what, what triggered you to write the novel? Uh, what, what, what was the impetus to, so you could start with F? Uh, the first impetus, that was many years ago, when I was when I got interested in the profession, if I can call it a profession, but it is a profession in or in a, in a way, of con men, of professional tricksters, and there are many kinds of that, of course, and uh, that actually happened while I was on a bus uh, in Mexico, going from uh, from Teotihuacan. Uh, back to to uh, to Mexico City, and I was talking to a nice elderly gentleman, and who was sitting next to me, and we really had a very nice conversation, and he was very interesting, and he told me a lot of interesting things about Mexican literature, and then it turned out that he had been mugged. Somebody. Had taken all his money so he had no cash he had no cards on himself no no uh, and, and, and he was worried how he would get home 
so I, I, I forcefully asked him to take some money from me and, and, and he was very grateful but also embarrassed and he promised to send it back right away and he said goodbye and then he never sent that money and I found it weird because he was so serious about sending back that money. So I, uh, I got on the internet which was not Google back then was Alta Vista, if anybody remembers. Hardly. And, <laughs> with and difficulty. These poor people from Alta Vista. <laughs> and they, they could have been Google now. And um, Alta Vista actually brought me to a, to a few reports by tourists who had been on that bus and had met the same guy and he did the same to them. And I was fascinated, especially by how could he know so much about Mexican literature? How could he be so knowledgeable about books? And then I, it occurred to me, yeah, because he was a good con man. So if I had been interested in something completely different, he would have known enough about that yeah. to really uh, to strike a conversation that really uh, would have given me the feeling that we, we, we really liked each other and we had a lot to say to each other. So um, since then, I had been thinking about writing about this profession of con man because there is something artistical about that. There is something uh, in a way akin to what artists do because you have to have imagination, you have to, have to put yourself in the place of others, you have to be quick, you have to be convincing. And um, also being a con man is a, is a, is a non-violent crime and in, 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 in some, in some of, of, of what they do, it's also a victimless crime. For example, an art forger only has, there are only victims, there are only people who get harmed if the art forger gets exposed. As long as he doesn't get exposed, actually nobody is harmed it's, by, it's by what they do. It's not a crime while you hang it on your wall back home. It's, it's only a crime if then it turns out that you pay too much for it. Yeah. And that will only come out when yeah. the forger gets exposed. So, um, and I was struggling for a while, actually for years, uh, how I would write about con men because they're so different so many different ways of them, so are, are kinds of them. And then I had this idea of, of writing about siblings, brothers, and they're all different kinds of con men. They don't know it about each other. Uh, just every one of them lives a different kind of lie or deception. And that led me to think about the family novel, to write, to, to, to think about how I could do an unusual take on the form of the, the family novel and, and, and so yeah, that's how it developed it all, you, you could say it's all a very, very elaborate plan to get back the 30 bucks I gave to that man on the bus and I'm, I'm sure you did in the end uh, but so you write a novel about conmen uh, with the idea in the back of your mind that they're close to the artistic endeavor. Uh, so, do you actually believe this that artists are con men, or they're just, I mean, similar to them? Um, I wouldn't go that far, or I would say there is an affinity because both have to invent and both have to be good at inventing and yeah. both have to be convincing and both need their imagination, but. Uh, <laughs> there is a huge difference, which is that an artist, like a magician, tells you that he's going to deceive you in a way that you will enjoy. So uh, the artist is not trying to uh, to do anything bad to you, and 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 that is a huge difference. I, so so I would not say that it's the same, but there are similarities that. Uh, got me. That got yeah. me interested. But you say that the artists are not trying to to harm you in any way. But in the novel, uh, the father yeah, Arthur, that's true. he writes uh, a book, um, and that book is actually harmful to people. It's a, a book about nothing or a, a book, book, book about no one. Yes, it's a, it's it's uh, it's a, the book itself. The book that Arthur writes is a, a an exercise in reader hypnosis, and uh, I don't really know whether he's out to harm readers, but it's a book that convinces, that makes an extremely convincing case to every single reader uh, that he or she as a personality doesn't exist. So it's kind of really troubling for, for, for readers. Um, and that book has, in, 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 that book in the book has a few, has the consequence that a few people actually kill themselves over it. And Arthur 
whether intend, he intended that or not, it becomes never clear. I don't think he intended that, but he also doesn't really mind. But that's the thing that makes him famous, the fact that people kill themselves over over his book. Uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, well, of course, you can see how that would make a writer famous. Would you say, because um, one thing that strikes you while, while you're reading, yes, thank you. Thank you. Fine. Strikes you while you're reading F is that uh, it's a novel about ideas and it's a novel about art, but it's also a novel where the characters themselves are very much alive and, and so to speak, in the flesh for you. Uh, and although these characters, especially, I would say, the guy called Eric, uh, who is a real bastard, to be, to be frank, uh, how, how, is, how is your feeling towards them? Do you like them or do you despise them or do you live with them or how? I did live with them. It was the first time in, in, that I tried to write a really character-driven novel, a yeah. novel where I, I started with the characters and then were try, kind of was kind of asking the characters to show me where to go and, 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 and what to do with them. And uh, of course, Eric is a terrible person, but uh, in 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 I I, I mean. I like him, of course, and and when I was writing, especially when I was writing his chapter, where he more and more descends into hallucinations and and delusions, um, writing that is a sort of actor-like effort on on the part of of a writer. You have to imagine to be like that, and uh, I feel quite close to him, although it was not pleasant to, to be in his role while I was writing this but um, I think uh, I think in general there is too much talk especially on Amazon readers reviews and things like that about the question are characters likable do we like these people would we like to meet them and eat with them and have beer with them and uh, I think a character a character in a novel can be a morally rather bad person <laughs> And we can still like to read about that person and to know more about that person. And that is actually the great thing about novels, that they can teach us to have sympathy for people who are not good people. And that's interesting and, 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 and I think also helpful for our humanity. I think that um, there's a lot of things that you won't forget with this novel while, while, while you've re uh, read it, but uh, I think the title itself is kind of, kind of unforgettable. Uh, there are not so many novels with, with that title. Uh, how did that find you or you find it? Um, it I, I always liked one-letter titles and I always wanted to have one myself. I mean, I'm not going to have another ever. That would be a bit ridiculous but no G after no, F. no, no G no, no follow up <laughs> no <laughs> also I think somebody did G maybe it was John Berger I mean, somebody did the G novel so there are not that many letters left but um, I, I there is no big mystery behind that title it was mostly the word family and I like this I like the f idea that the bi big word family in the case of my novel was just reduced to one letter it's also the Na the first letter of the name of the family it's about, the Friedland. Friedland. Yeah. It's also the uh, Arthur at one point in the book talks about fate as the big F, and it is a book about fate, about the little coincidences that then turn into something significant uh, in, in, in life. And it's about forgery, and it, it's also in, in, a, in a way a nod to Orson Welles' wonderful last movie called F is in Fake, uh, which is a, a great f mock documentary that I can really recommend. It's, it's a wonderful movie. So for all these reasons, there is no big mystery behind that title. It just for all these reasons, I, I, I really enjoyed having a one-letter title for once in, in, in my writing life. So now I've had it, now I have to think of longer titles again. <laughs> And Daniel, thank you so much for sharing all your thoughts on F. It's thank a you. fabulous novel. It's the best novel you read this year, uh, I must say. Thank you so much. And thank you in the audience. Thank you. Thank you.